Welcome back to Nova Mesto once again. Uh, the stadium 99% full, a fantastic turnout of the locals here. And uh, I should think uh, at least 80% have, have come from the Czech Republic, Norwegians, Russians, and uh, of course the Germans in evidence. The French are here now with uh, the success that they've had so far, already claiming two silver medals, but demoted the third in the medal table thanks to the performances of Ukraine yesterday in the sprint where they claimed a, a gold and a bronze. Well, Martin Foucault uh, was on very good form yesterday. The only thing he did wrong was draw the wrong bib number because he started exactly two minutes in front of this man, Emil Hegler Svensson, the man who uh, did so much to give Norway their first gold in the mixed relay. He was on flying form again. He said he didn't feel that well in the mixed relay, but uh, he certainly looked to be in great shape yesterday. Martin Foucault, five out of five in the pro, no mistakes at all, and recording the fastest time at the first interval. Svensson. Knew what he had to do. He came in one second down. He took that little bit less time to prepare for the first shot, and he went out with a significant margin. The second lap, two, the two men skied at virtually exactly the same pace, just one second faster for Svensson. A mistake from Martin Foucault. Well, many thought that would put him off the podium, but no, he's so, so strong on the final lap that he was able to come through. Svensson also missing on the last shoot. And exiting the range after his penalty, just 10 seconds clear of the Frenchman. 23-33 put Foucault into the lead at the end of his run. 24 seconds inside Anton Chapulin of, of Russia, who gets a very good start today in the pursuit. And Svensson maintaining eight seconds of the 10-second lead that he had to do enough and claim his second gold medal of the championships. The perfect day, he says. Of course, he's happy. He's uh, only had one win prior to this so far this season. And he's the sort of athlete that only comes to win. Can he do it again and make it three in a row? It's going to be a tough job. Martin Foucault said he only wanted one gold. Maybe it will be tough. He's saying he's on good form. Uh, he gave absolutely everything to try and catch Svensson, but it wasn't to be. Uh, but I think Having watched the first two races of the men's, Mike uh, Martin Foucault has just conserved a little bit of energy uh, for the pursuit today. But watch out for Jakob Fack. My goodness, he's the man for the big moment. And Oleana Bjorndalen looking for major championship medal number 50. Is he going to do it today? He's already won this title five times. And today it would be an immense achievement if he managed to do it at the age of 39. Oleana Bjorndalen, 23.45, only 19 seconds outside that gold medal. One more hit and it would have been his. I feel good and still motivated, so I'm really happy to be in good shape again. Did you make today? No, one mistake is okay. Uh, it was quite difficult condition. I was shooting really good in brown shooting. It was a lot of wind and I do the right decision, so that was really cool. Your ski was not bad. My skiing was also good. I was really happy, happy with my ski time today, so I feel good. And uh, it's the first race, so I don't make so much hard training before I come here, so I think I go can go faster. So you are many swing. Uh, no <laughs> yeah, I think so. We have a good posi position now and Emil will win today. And yeah, we'll see. Maybe I can make a good race also on the pursuit. So, Oli Aino, he's uh, fairly positive, Mike. Uh, he says he can go faster. He thinks he can hit more targets. If he does, maybe he could win today. But I think uh, a medal will be his goal, and top three is certainly possible. Surely one of the leading three will make a mistake at some stage. I, I think so. I think when you've got Svensson and Foucault side by side, uh, two, they're both standing on each other's patch. They want to own that crown, and that is going to take them to a different level once again today. They both want this gold medal so much and I think that's the undoing on the shooting range. Well, we'll see if that is the case. Madame Foucault has looked uh, particularly cool this year when it's come to the head-to-head -head races, the mass start and the pursuit. Svensson has been found wanting a little, but he looked brilliant in the sprint yesterday. 
Well, let's not forget the rest of the field. The top three we know about. Bjorn Dahlen we know about starting number four, only 19 seconds off the leaders. Malishko goes five for Russia. Alexi Berf, the little Frenchman who's produced some uh, absolutely tremendous runs so far. He goes number six. And Anton Chapulin, who won the last of the pursuits in Antolz and Selva, he starts number seven ahead of Freddie Lindstrom, who was the third fastest skier in the sprint yesterday. But he missed two targets, and that put him out of contention for the medals. The clock chimes. One o'clock, and we are away. And it's Emil Hegler Svensson who's earned himself an eight second lead over Martin Forcada. Now, normally, Mike, we wouldn't think that was significant, but it is today because we've got to see what Forcard does. You think he's going to try and close that gap on the first loop. Jakob Fack will certainly try and stay with the Frenchman. And already, those three are going head to head, and maybe ignoring the fact that they've got the likes of Bjorn Dahlen, Malishko, Berth, Shapulin, Lindstrom, Ustagoff right on their tail. Do you know, it's it, this race is 12.5 kilometers. Martin Fourcade and Fack, they set off as if this was, this was a one kilometer race, maybe. But I know they want to close down on Sven and keep the pressure on Svensson into the first shoot. Lindstrom and Ustikov setting off pretty much side by side after good performances. Lindstrom is on the form of his life. It would be nice to see the Swedes get on the medal table for the first time. Simon Eder is the best of the Austrians from the sprint, and he starts number 10 ahead of perhaps the best marksman in the field, Krasmir Anna for Bulgaria. Eric Lesser goes for Germany, number 12. Ferry goes 13. And Lukas Hoffer of Italy starting 14 ahead of Landertinger. Aunt Pfeiffer just about to get underway for Germany, but already one minute eight seconds behind the leaders almost 400 meters behind it's a huge margin back but wait nobody prior to this race that i've been talking to has much expectations for tarya boo i think tarya boo bibs bib 18 he's only 114 behind if he finds his shooting magic i honestly think he's a contender today well he starts number 18 and where's bib number 18 number 19 is Goranichev, and the 20 is bib Flix. and all three men had very respectable ski times in the sprint if any of those three go clear today they could easily find themselves in the top five so much so and uh, one day uh, an athlete we didn't see much of yesterday thomas kalkinas 22 from lithuania that's his best ever result uh, his previous best was 41st he came 20th yesterday well he's uh, got some pretty distinguished company around him he's going to struggle to stay in 22nd position but we'll do our best to track him on the way round. look at oh. that martin forcard has closed eight oh. seconds in the first kilometer impressive but mike we've seen all already in these championships there is a price to pay for going off so fast oh it's Svensson being super intelligent the way he's just calmly taking this pace he's allowing them to pull back Fack has got it closed down from 11 to 6 and Bjorn Dahlen started 19.9 behind he's uh, pretty much keeping pace I think Svensson is taking it relatively easy Bjorn Dahlen I think that's a sensible pace Mike I can't believe Martin Volcard's done the right thing it didn't pay off in the mixed relay and I, I think it's unlikely to pay off today but I think what he wants to do is to try and control the race get in front of Svensson and then skied at his pace. Uh, there's so much psychology in this, isn't there? So for Cad put everything out to make sure that he got quickly onto the skis of Svensson. Maybe not to intimidate, but to let him know that he's uh, that he's not going to have an easy ride. Berf has gained three seconds. Shapulin has gained four seconds. Ustigov started 38 behind, is now 33, so he's gained five seconds already. Lindstrom now 35, having started 38, so he's gained three. A steady start for Freddie Lindstrom. I think that is sensible, but the leader's heading back down towards the stadium for the first shoot remember the distance is just 12 and a half kilometers so uh, five times round the two and a half kilometer loop as we saw for the women's it's fast downhills Mike some technical turns and could it, be interesting later on it will it's going to break up as we see it becomes sugary and uh, we could expect that it will definitely break up by their third fourth fifth lap it's an easier track today Patrick yesterday they skied 3.3 kilometers today this two and a half kilometer track the profile I think allows for those further back to stay closer to the elite skiers like Svensson and Fourcade I must say Fourcade is taking a very different uh, descent line downhill line than Svensson just cutting the corners nicely, saving that little bit of energy and carrying his speed out. Now, intimidation. His skis clipped the poles of Svensson there. That is irritating. 
just letting him know that uh, that his presence is right there with him. Well, a pretty stiff pace set in the early stages of this race. Two and a half Ks. Mike, what are we looking at? About six minutes to complete as uh, those behind start to close up. That's Alexi Berth looking very smooth. He's got a train of Russians behind him. Shapulin, Ustigov, Malishko, all happy to settle for a slightly steadier pace in the early part of this race. Malishko, Mike, uh, do you fancy his chances? Uh, he did the double in Oberhof, which is really where he first came to our attention. Uh, and, he, and he's a man who hated sport as a youngster. He was sent to a sports school by his parents, hated it. But then he found he was quite good. And as soon as you find you're good, you start to enjoy things. Yeah, his story is an unusual story. Uh, to have so much uh, to really not want to be an athlete when he was six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old. But as you say, he had a talent. And, yeah. and, and then reward uh, becomes self-focusing or focusing on the on the goal which is medals and that's what he's won since then yeah when he gave it up as a teenager he went to work in a bank <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> long it wasn't long before he realized which was going to be the most promising and the most rewarding career perhaps not financially but he's doing all right for himself uh, promised himself a Bentley after his success in Oberhof now Svensson taking his time and remember Svensson was the man who took the risks in the pursuit event in the sprint event yesterday so it was a little quicker with the first round it's going to be interesting to see who strikes first they are both Patrick shooting much slower than they normally do they're just being so careful they don't want any mistakes Martin Foucault, he waited because the wind built, but he uh, adjusted well. Oliana Bjorndalen has gone and missed one. Oh. He's missed two, exactly the same as he did in last year's World Championships. He shot 2 0, zero, zero but uh, I'm afraid that might be his chance gone. Jakob Fack clears five. So does Shapulin. Alexi Berf, no mistake. Malishko, likewise. Five of the top six have gone clear. In fact, seven, eight of the top nine have gone five out of five, and that means Bjorndalen's going be dropping right down the order if you're going to make mistakes make them early on but two penalty loops 300 meters he's left himself with an awful lot to do is anyone else going to miss a target eric lesser of germany has so maybe mickey grice was right in saying that there will not be a german medal today Landertinger, five out of five. Bjorn Ferry, the Olympic champion, goes five out of five. And of course, Anef, no problem at all. Nice fast shooting and absolutely central. Tarja Burem and uh, Garanishev missing two each. Uh, middle of the range. Ugh, the wind isn't much different back there. And I think that the whole theme here is that all the athletes are taking seven to nine seconds slower within the routines, building the routine slowly and taking a lot longer in between each shot. Sukup of the Czech Republic uh, draws a groan from the crowd uh, and he's missed too early. Vitek likewise, so not good, uh, not a good start for the Czechs. Maybe the pressure is starting to show. Tim Burke of USA gets five. He'll certainly move up the order. He started 28 today, was disappointed with his sprint run, but uh, he's got a lot of potential and certainly a top 10 is possible today if he stays clean. Legelica Canada goes clean. Lave Lund of Norway does what Bjorn Dahlen couldn't do and what Terry Bo couldn't do. Hits five out of five. Morovic took an age there to shoot his five. Svensson much slower than yesterday. High left. The wind has dropped, so his sights are adjusted a little to the left. So that's quite difficult, Mike. Three on the left, two in the middle. What, what are the coaches going to say? A couple of clicks to the right? I think they will. The, the wind is definitely has changed from their zero to the right. And I think that's what's caught out beyond Darlin. Well, we'll see whether he adjusts. He may just choose to aim off if the wind changes. Uh. 
Welcome back to Nova Mesto. There is a, a battle royal going on between Svensson and Forcada up front. Yakovac is leading the best of the rest uh, ahead of Shapulin, who's gained 12 seconds already on the first lap. Alexi Perf has gone from six to five. De Malishko dropping from five to six. But Simon Ada of Austria has gone from 10th up into seventh with a clear shoot. And news for fans of Oleana Bjorndal and two misses on that first shoot. He's dropped to 52.3 seconds behind the leaders. And it is not looking good for the uh, ex-champion. Well, these two, Mike, uh, as you suggested, starting to uh, get involved with each other rather than just focusing on their own race plan. I, there's two. The egos here are massive. Uh, Foucault pulled back the two seconds after the first shoot. He broke away from uh, Svensson a little, and Svensson on the steepest climb out when we're on our ad break put in a huge attack and then separated himself by a further two seconds. So they they really are pushing each other to the limits. And uh, Martin Foucault is intimidating Svensson a little. He's clipping it. Uh, Accidentally, maybe, he's clipping the back of his ski poles and his skis. A little irritating. Well, uh, many said that the mixed relay was the perfect race, apart from the fact that Svensson and Forcard weren't locked side by side at the start of the last lap. That may be the way it turns out today. But they're going to have to shoot exactly the same scores for that to happen. Leading uh, the chasing group now, Anton Schipulin. Remember, double success in Antolz. He looked on fantastic form, but that was almost three weeks ago. Uh, he doesn't seem to have lost any of that 16.8 having started a full 32 seconds so he's gained 32 seconds on the first lap and a half Jakob Fack is still there just looking for the fall of shot and that's the information pass much easier to do it with a, a, a magnetic board Mike than trying to explain where that where the shots have gone. and as an athlete as a biathlete you are your own boss when it comes to making your decisions on the on the wind on how it's affecting the fall of a shot so clear image there for Malishko I don't think he'll adjust the shots were fairly central, if not slightly to the left. And that's because the wind, it, well, it's spiraling. It is a little bit from the right, therefore pushing the shots left. The top eight separated by a mere 30 seconds. Uh, not too dissimilar from the start where it was a 38 second gap. But uh, there have been gains by Shapulin. Fak has lost a little bit of ground. Alexi Berth now just 18 seconds behind, having started 25. So he's done well, but no one has challenged these two so far. Svensson once again goes into lane one where he was for the first shoot. And he'll take his time. Interesting to see Forcada prepares lying down. Svensson chooses to be on the knees. A little bit easier to fill the lungs with fresh air. Different styles, very different styles, but they're both being ultra careful again. Sometimes when you're too careful, you over try, but well, they know best. The first miss from Martin Foucard. Maybe this is an opportunity for Svensson to get clear. He will. Martin Foucard takes his time on the last shot. He certainly didn't want a double loop, but an opportunity for now for Shapulin or Fak to come up and challenge Svensson. Fak's got four out of four, so is Shapulin. Clean sheet for Fak and Shapulin. Those two will go head to head for the silver medal position. Foucard is halfway round, three quarters of the way round the penalty loop now, and will come out some 20 metres behind the uh, Russian and of course the Slovak Lindstrom of Sweden what a brilliant performance from him so far why didn't he shoot like this in the sprint yesterday he could so easily have got himself a medal Bjorn Dahlen two misses first time round he's clean three out of three four out of four five out of five for Bjorn Dahlen he is back in contention it's going to be very very difficult to win this one but it's all about medals he wants that medal number 50 so many people and so many people working around the stadium here 1300 volunteers are wanting Bjorn Dahlen to come back to his best and he's only losing two seconds a lap Patrick on Svensson's time now Arne Pfeiffer's done pretty well Mike he started 16th 108 behind the leaders we'll just try and spot him as he comes out he won't have made too much uh, ground in in terms of time but he certainly should have gained a few positions he's gone up two into 40 there is Emilia of uh, Ukraine down in 15th position at the moment Simon Fulcard's having a nightmare surprised to see that Krasmir and F missed a shot as well. Ah, oh, that's uh, the end of the day for Simon Fourcard, Mike, surely. You can't miss uh, three in, in, in one visit and get away with it. No, his race is done. But look at the flags. The wind has very much picked up from the left. 
Svensson, it's not complicated. This is the adjustable. You can see the letter 2 and 2.5. That's opening up the rear aperture when the light goes down. Well, it's not the brightest day we've had, but uh, the light is pretty good. It's been consistent between zeroing and racing. Uh, and that's something that uh, the women won't have this evening because it will be dark by the time they start. Well, what a race. And suddenly, Svensson finds himself with uh, a little bit of clear ground between himself and the chasing pack. We'll get a, an update in just a second as he comes through the next checkpoint at six kilometers. There we go. Fack isn't so far behind. Now, Fourcade, Patrick, was 20.3 seconds behind after the statute. I think uh, Fourcade is going to put in another major attack to try and close down and the chasing group well Fack and Shapula in fact there he is already for card he goes through and uh, he's cut the gap to 19.7 so he hasn't gained too much on Svensson uh, most most men only have one good sprint in the mic uh, and it's best to say that for the end surely Alexi Berf uh, just behind his teammate in fifth position at the moment I think that would be a popular medal if Berf managed to get into the top three Malishko looking for his third success of the season in sixth at the moment Simonada nice and steady from the Austrian he's shot 0-0 and moves from 10th up into 6th position now going ahead of Freddie Lindstrom Lindstrom missing no in fact Lindstrom went clear on that second prone slightly surprised that he hasn't got a little bit closer to the leaders yes not quite on the ski form I'm amazed to see that 13 out of the first 21 athletes so far have hit the perfect 10 out of 10. But of course, the stand shooting coming up next is where this test really begins. Bjorn Dahlen incidentally, for those following his fortunes, back up into ninth position, 45 seconds behind, and he's gained seven seconds on Svensson in the last two and a half kilometers. Most of that was done on the range. Uh, and so Bjorn Dahlen has uh, got himself into the top 10. He is only 20 seconds off uh, a fourth position at the moment. So things still looking pretty good for him. Well, a slight stumble there from FAC. Yes, uh, the legs are now beginning to feel. What's that after 17 minutes of racing? You mentioned Bjorn Dallin, Effie and Edwin from London. They're really hoping that he can now keep those together and get the next 10 shots in the standing. And who knows, that could well be a medal for Bjorn Dallin. The track's in great condition. Started snowing at about 7 o'clock this morning. Certainly it wasn't heavy, but there's a sprinkling of fresh snow on top of the artificial snow. That makes life a little bit hard for the technicians to get the skis right. Norway haven't made any mistakes so far in this championships. The French, the Russians all seem to have been OK. Germany are the team that seem to have made mistakes. And it's not so much with the choice of wax, Mike. We're starting to think that they've got the wrong grind on the ski. Oh, well, I've even heard a story where they've, they've recently had them re -grind. So brand spank a new preparation on the base of the ski for these conditions. But sometimes you need to put a lot of wax in and out of the base, which they're obviously doing. And often you need to ski at least 100 kilometers on them to, to just to wear them in. So there's some issue going on, I think. I know the Americans called in some athletes to get some miles onto their skis uh, because they felt they hadn't had enough skiing in them. And so uh, that wouldn't be a bad job, would it? <laughs> Ada up into fifth now. He's uh, moving well. The Austrians will certainly be uh, optimistic about this one. Malishko of Russia is uh, some way behind his teammate. Shapulin looking very, very solid. He's, uh, he's looked good. Remember, what was it, three, four years ago when Shapulin was dominating the Junior World Championships? And, and it's been a steady progression, Mike. So many people expect you to be brilliant the year you join the Senior Tour. But Shapulin, just bit by bit, occasional win, occasional podium finish. But this season, he started to be consistent. I think so. And uh, well, when he was 21, uh, when he just came through into the seniors, I think they raced him to bits. And we saw some serious fatigue from Shapulin. And of course, they rested him and he's built stronger, learned all the skills. And if Shapulin can hang on to the, hold on to the pressure here, He's still one of my favourites to take the gold. So, Emil Hegler Svensson, two golds already from these championships. Can he make it three out of three? He still has 10 targets between himself and success. 15.6 seconds his margin last time we saw him. Martin Foucault has pushed hard to get up alongside him. First shot, absolutely crucial for Svensson.
Fantastic. 15 out of 15 for Svensson and now Martin Foucault. He knew he couldn't miss and he has thrown one wide. So, signs of weakness from the great Frenchman for the first time this season. Jakob Fack could be bringing Slovenia their second medal. Four out of four, five out of five. Great shooting from Fack. Simonada starts to pay the price of skiing too hard on that third lap. Two misses from him. Malishko goes up into the top and he'll be the best Russian as they head out on lap number four. Berth makes rare mistakes. Lindstrom again with a missed target, but he's still in contention. And now for Ole Einar Bjorn Dahlen. He hit four out of five in the stand yesterday, and it was the third shot he missed on that occasion. In fact, it was, a four, it was, it was the it's last shot he missed. It was the last it, shot he missed because he usually shoots that right-hand target uh, well, uh, fourth and then comes in one for the final shot. Well, the 24,000 spectators here are really, were really gunning there for Bjorn Dahlen to get. There was a big sigh when he missed that one shot. Pfeiffer, Dertzemlia feeling the pressure physically, mentally. There is still an opportunity because this sort of pressure forces mistakes. Martin Foucault now 38.7 behind. The man who won three gold medals in Rupolding last year uh, may, may have a little inkling of doubt in his mind at the moment. What can he do to put pressure on Svensson? Nothing so far has worked. Svensson has been immaculate. So cool, but skiing steady as well. Right over on the right, a snatch, a flinch, a snatch, a nervous thought, enough to throw that shot wide. He's not quite himself at all. He's had to push hard out there in the tracks. Yeah, he's muscling the rifle to try and keep it on the target. And uh, <laughs> although four go down, that one miss could prove very, very expensive. There are the top ten after the third shoot. Just one more standing shoot to go. Welcome back to Nova Mesto. Uh, Emil Hegler Svensson already through the 8.5 kilometer stage. Landertinger of Austria has gone ahead of uh, his teammate Simon Ada with some very good shooting. And actually, Mike, this is as good a shooting we, as we've seen in a pursuit of any major championships ever. It really is. So many for the back down. Low Bailey has gone from 32nd to 16th. Simon Schemp has gone from 29th to 15th. And uh, Legelic the, with the perfect score so far as well from 36th to 14th. There's some amazing shooting performances, but the pressure shoot to come. Landetinger has gone 0 0 0. He did that last year in Rupolding, and then he missed four in the standing. Remember, he was contending for the medals and just meltdown. That's what it can do to you. Well, we've seen some impressive gains this season. Uh, we had uh, Tim Burke gaining 31 places in Antolz. Andy Birnbacher, he made 37 places up in Pukuka, but uh, the top of the lot is Malishko, who went from 58th to 19th in Pukuka. A gain of some 39 places. Fantastic performance from him on that occasion. Uh, it's not quite gone Malishko's way today, but he's still up in third position. No mistakes on the range. 21 seconds behind. Is he going to be the man who claims Russia's first medal of these championships? He'll want it, but I bet Malishko, as he just goes over that rise, I bet he's wishing he had the form that he had in Oberhof, where he took the three victories three days in a row. He's just somewhat 20 seconds off that form. So Svensson leads. He has never won a major pursuit event. Martin Foucault, of course, with the last two, trying to make it three in a row, which would equal Ole Einar Bjorn Dahlen. But Foucault's chances have diminished somewhat. The last we had, he was 36 seconds behind. We'll get another reading here at 9.5 with just 3,000 metres to go. But crucially, five more targets still to be hit. Jakob Fack, who's shown himself to be very strong in the head-to-heads this season. He was on the podium in Antolz. He was on the podium in the pursuit in Pukuka as well and he lies in second place at the moment ahead of Malishko. Looking down this uh, well it's a steep climb Patrick but the body language from Martin Foucault uh, in the far distance he's not got quite the same spirit or movement on the skis. Well, what are you saying? He's a little bit heavier in the legs. Just the, the rolling, we don't. We often see a crisp reaction, a sharpness. There's just some spirit broken, I would say, and, well, two shots missed. Yeah, he has to throw caution to the wind now, doesn't he, Mike? 35 seconds, he's got to shoot two shoots, two shots better than Svensson on the final shoot. Svensson now coming into the stadium, just cruising, cruising for the last four, 500 metres, bringing that pulse from 180 to 170, 160, and by the time he stands on the mat, it will be closer to one. 45 before he prepares for that first shot if he can do what he's done on the previous three shots the gold medal will be in the bag and it will be three out of three for Emil Hegler Svensson whoever thought he was finished was wrong
What a season he's having. Second in the World Cup standings and closing the gap all the time on Martin Forcada of France. But can he cope with the pressure here in Nova Mesto? He knows how big this is. He knows how small the targets are. The wind blowing fairly viciously from left to right. That's cruel. In that instant, the wind has just picked up. One miss, not a problem. Two misses, and the nerves might take over. Now there is a chance. A penalty loop to play, but he only had some 18 seconds advantage over Jakob Fack of Slovenia, and the penalty loop will take 23. So a chance for Fack certainly to take the lead. Malishko could go with him, but a mistake from Fack, his first of the day. Now, can Malishko hold it together? He should come out level with uh, Svensson if he goes clear. He does go clear. 20 out of 20 for Dmitry Malishko. Exactly what he did in uh, over half uh, just after the Christmas break. And he's not quite got the lead, but he has a taste. He has a taste. He can smell Svensson. He's so close. My goodness, 1.9 seconds. Jakob Fack now flying round the lap. Martin Fulcada has gone clear and looks as though he may well be claiming medals again, but Anton Shapulin has played a pretty sensible race so far. 17 seconds separating the top five at the moment. Svensson, Mike, uh, is he going to have uh, the legs to beat Malishko? Well, I, I think that Fulcada might come back to life. His spirit was down, but he, he realises that with Svensson having gone that 150 metres extra, Svensson's legs are tired leaving the stadium a good shoot for Lindstrom but uh, one mistake uh, earlier on just looking at Lindstrom's shooting record it was the third shoot the first in the stand that proved uh, the hurdle that he couldn't clear uh, Lukas Hoffer much better standing shooting from Luka, Lukas Hoffer that we've seen in the last few seasons and that is really good news for him maybe the mass start will be where he shines this time round and if five out of five thank you very much now let's have a look at uh, Malishko this was without thinking he just let them go he didn't put too much thought into this he just reacted it was brilliant well it's given him a chance of claiming not only russia's first medal but perhaps russia's first gold medal of these championships there are the margins just 1.9 between gold and silver and Foucault, as yesterday has 10 seconds to gain on the last lap Well, what an atmosphere. Unfortunately, Mike, uh, the Czechs aren't really at the races today. No Czech representation in the top 18-19. And uh, oh. my goodness, would you have expected this to happen? Svensson looks to be a spent force. Or is he just saving himself for the sprint? I... That 10-second gap has been closed. And we now have two Russians, a Norwegian and a Frenchman, separated oh. by just 20 metres on the final lap. Never, never have we had a situation like this at a major championship. What is going on? I wish we'd followed them out of the stadium. Why did Svensson let go of that 10 seconds? Well, he let go of 8 seconds from it for CAD from the start to the first kilometre. Well, I'm just wondering, Mike, Svensson had to work hard to claim the gold in the mixed relay. He had to work exceccionally hard to hold Forcada off in the sprint event and claim the gold in that. Is he starting to get fatigued? That's three races in four days. Yes, sir, I think they all are. And we saw that with Martin Forcada. When he missed his first shot, his spirit dropped. The fatigue, they're all kind of having a rest and Malishko leading it. They're just brewing up for the attack. Well, which is the best sprinter? Well, we're going to find out I think uh, this time around just looking at the layout of the stadium it's quite a quick entry into the stadium and then of course uh, what 150 meters there's plenty of space for overtaking but it's going to be the man who's got the most to give in the last 100 meters that wins this one don't rule the Russians out Malishko's won a couple of sprints already this season and Shapulin may be the freshest of all if they slow this down anymore Patrick Fack's going to come in on this in fact Dead Lindstrom will come in on this <laughs> Lindstrom won't believe his luck. He came out of oh, the range. Uh, in fact, Lindstrom. no, it's Landertinger, of course. Uh, they're lapping some athletes. OK. This has got to go brutal very, very soon. Uh, and I think Svensson's the best sprinter in this group, but you have to get yourself in the right place at the right time. Malishko is still the man setting the pace as they go over the top of the next little rise. This course, uh, it doesn't have the long, long climbs that we've seen already this season. It's all about up and down, sharp corners, technical skiing. And Svensson, the man who came out of the stadium in first, is now down in fourth. He's left himself with a lot to do. He's got to be very, very careful tactically to make sure that he stays in touch with the leaders. 
We have Russia leading. France in second. Russia third. Norway now pushed down into fourth place. Under the tunnel. And this is where they'll all be thinking about where they make their move. Have they got anything left to give to make their move? Svensson needs to get himself from fourth up at fourth into second if he wants another goal. Three in a row. He's got to match Martin Foucault. Is this a question of who wants it most? Ah, oh, it is. From, I think Martin Foucault has done the right thing. He's moving forward. Svensson's, there's no way through at the moment. He wants to get past. Svensson just moving up in a third with no effort whatsoever. I think he'll brew. He's uh, ferociously competitive, but being squeezed out by Malishko. And now a chance for Anton Shapulin to show what he can do. Number seven, Anton Shapulin, and the leader of the two Russians at the moment, draws himself alongside Foucault, but Svensson starts to make an early move on the far side. Now Martin Foucault just puts a little injection of pace in there. Looks to be relatively well oh. recovered. Shapulin clipping the skis of Svensson who may find that that is the move that cost the Norwegian his third gold medal and Foucault drives and drives and drives through 12 kilometres 500 metres to go just over the minute left and Svensson tries again, give him credit Mike, he could so easily have gone down on that occasion Svensson got it wrong, he gave himself the hard work but I don't think it's over for Svensson as soon as he smells a chance for victory he, for me he's the best sprinter well the three on the podium I think decided, I think Shapulin's still hanging in there Svensson has closed the gap and round the final corners they come into the stadium. It's still Martin Foucault, the three-time champion from last year in Rupolding, looking for his first goal here. But Svensson's coming fast oh. in the closing stages. And I think the Frenchman may well have taken. Oh, my goodness. Svensson recovers. And he celebrates first. The photo finish. We will not jump the gun on this one. I think Martin Foucault. Oh, how disappointed will he be if he hasn't claimed it? The two greatest men in biathlon for the last three seasons. One and two yet again. Shipulin gets Russia's first medal. It will be a bronze. There's no doubt about that. And what a run from Malishko, Mike. But just didn't have enough to give in that last 500 metres. <laughs> what a race. Never in world championships pursuit history have we had four going for the line. Svensson, I, I, I has been given, he has, he has. Looking out of the commentary box, Mike, it looked as though Foucault had it, but that fall across the line has cost him because Svensson being on his feet has been able to drive that leg forward. Once you're falling, you no. can't push the leg as far forward. The confidence in Svensson, the self-belief, he was tired. I think he played this so intelligently. It looked a bit scary at times. Well, Foucault may have been the king for the last two years. Not anymore. <laughs> three golds. Three golds out of three. And Martin Fulcada will have to raise his game in the individual or the mass start or the relay if he wants to head home with a gold medal because Svensson looks as though he wants the lot here in Nova Mesto. Here comes the first of the Americans. Bjorn Dahlen, uh, apologies. I know a lot of you out there wanted to know exactly how he was doing, but uh, the, the, the action up front, just too exciting. 2 0 1 1 Bjorn Dahlen's shooting score. It still shows that Bjorn Dahlen and the individual uh, he is he has the legs to make it happen he took the silver medal of course in Vancouver in the individual it's a different kind of race this for me was well one of the best ever races at world championships in the history of biathlon fantastic Lau Bailey uh, hats off 32nd all the way up into 13th position 29 places gained fantastic run from Lau Bailey I think my maths is wrong there. 19 places gained. Either, <laughs> either, way, either way, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Bjorn Ferry going from 13 to 9, but unable to repeat his success of Vancouver 2010, where he claimed the Olympic title. Here comes Simon Forcada, missed three in the prone early on. 2.15 behind the winning time. When you look at this run into home, Patrick, uh, Forcad had the best line. Forcad had the left of our screen. Svensson had to go the long way around, but he had total and utter belief in himself. Well, what a race. What a fantastic race. And uh, the top 30 now decided. Derry Zemlia just coming in for Ukraine. Good World Cup points. On, uh, in terms of World Cup points, Mike, at one stage, it looked as though Svensson may cut the gap on Martin Fulcada to about 15 points, but not anymore. Only six points gained with a win. <laughs> Fulcada back in silver medal position. So he's got three silvers to add to the three golds that he got in Rupolding. But I think deep down he'll be bitterly disappointed he couldn't take that one. He, he had the best race line. He put himself 
in the right place at the right time, but he didn't quite have the legs. And Svensson getting into all kinds of trouble at that point, it looked doubtful yeah. for Svensson, for Cad reacted immediately and put in a spurt, a turn of pace. Well, here's the finish. At this stage, Madame Foucard had the advantage, but Svensson has that extra little lean with the upper body, and he's getting an extra inch drive through the arms every single stride, and then it comes to the leg. Well... My goodness, even from that shot, it looked as though the Frenchman had it. They've made the difference, 0.1 of a second. Let's look from the other side. At this stage, Foucard clearly ahead. And I guess the fall has cost him. I he, think the fall he, has cost he put him. his knee down on the snow and it restricted his reach across the line. Svensson had the momentum, but what part of the body counts? Don't forget they've got the transponder on their shin. Well, that's right. It is the. If the, it was the toe, if it was the toe, I think Foucard had it. Well, that lean back possibly costing him. Yes. Yeah. Well, you can't say he didn't give it everything, but Svensson, after that little uh, mishap with uh, Anton Shapulin, I think deserves this one to come back from that. So many would have given up. Well, there's a lesson, Mike. Well, the lesson, and in sprinting, Foucault looked left. He should have kept it. <laughs> Easy to analyse it later, but he looked left. He couldn't believe Svensson was coming through on the outside. But don't forget, Foucault had to gain 10 seconds on that last loop to get in touch with Svensson in the Svensson first place. Svensson let him get it easy, though, let's be honest. Svensson backed off completely. Well, I do hope you enjoyed uh, that race. Uh, if you can take any more, we've got the women's <laughs> <laughs> we've got the women's race coming up. Not sure I can. <laughs> and uh, actually, the women's race could be very, very exciting. We've got two Ukrainians starting in the first three, with of course Tora Berger, who's now the hot favourite with her shooting record to claim uh, a gold medal in the in the in the pursuit this afternoon. But the Russian women, I think, will respond to the success from the men today. Both Shapulin and, M and Malishko putting in fine performances. They've now got that bronze medal. It takes the pressure off them. It takes the pressure off the coaches. And I think we might start to see the Russians step it up a gear. Possibly. And it's Zaitseva for me. Well, she was my favourite for yesterday in the sprint. Uh, today, well, there is that, as you mentioned, the element of huge pressure in the Russian team. But surely Zaitseva can certainly get a medal today. Babchin of Belarus, 5 minutes 45 in terms of distance. He's about two and a half kilometers behind. He was still on the range when the sprint was going on for the finish. That's how good the leaders are, not how slow Babchin is. Uh, Foucault, Svensson, well, we've been saying that they're in a class of their own. I think uh, today uh, the Russians have certainly proved that that is not the case. Well, that's exactly right, because remember, Shipulin, he only finishes, what, three seconds behind, 3.6 behind, and he started 30. 33 behind Svensson at the start of the day. Yeah, it's slightly bizarre, isn't it? The gold medalist didn't even have the top five fastest time. <laughs> it's almost cruel. I mean, you win the sprint race, you really are setting yourself up for an advantage. You're, you are being chased, there is pressure. But as I say, Shapulin starting 33 behind, he had an awful lot of work to pull back. Well, let's have another look at the sprint uh, fans of uh, Foucault. Maybe that little yeah. that loss of balance, that, yeah. And the look well, across. Why yeah. is he looking across? Yeah. Unnecessary. And that's uh, got to have hurt because that's a big, uh, that's a wooden four inches wide bit of wood set down four centimetres before, below the snow level. Well, I guarantee he won't have felt it on no. that instance. He wasn't concerned about his well-being. It was all about getting that leg across the line. Foucault's foot is across first, but the transponder on Svensson's leg reaches the line first. That is what counts. And so Foucault has to come back another day to try and turn silver into gold. Well, well, I think that uh, shot doesn't tell us much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's good, good image, though. Well, I think it's turned out to be quite a good stadium, hasn't it, Micah? It's an, an interesting, a couple of technical turns on the approach. The last 500 metres, fascinating duel uh, with Svensson certainly getting the Norwegians worried by dropping back to fourth place. He came through in the end, 32.35, the winning time, and that is quick for the 12 and a half kilometres. The shooting standard up to the last shoot, absolutely superb. Dmitry Malishko and Dominic Landertinger, as, long, as well as Bjorn Ferry and Lau Bailey, all shooting 20 out of 20 today. Svensson hitting 19, which is the case in just about every pursuit win this season. Uh, that's four of the six. The winner has hit 19 out of 20. 
So Norway go from success to success. They now have three gold medals in the bag. Well, that's a really good uh, bit of acceleration. A little bit of uh, skate two from Svensson. He, nice short, sharp strides, high tempo, Mike, compared to Martin Forcada, who was uh, digging deep. I think the lactate levels must have been fairly high. The balance has gone, the legs have gone. He gave it everything, but he made that lunge just a fraction, a fraction of a second too early. Otherwise, the gold was his. I think, well, it certainly looked impossible that Svensson could come back in those last 100 meters. But uh, for Cad, he lost his balance about two strides before that fall, and I think that's what cost him. He lost his balance just slightly, and then he lost his whole approach to that final 10 meters. Dimitri. Malishko couldn't take the medal for Russia. Anton Shapulin has come through to claim it. And Shapulin certainly deserves it. He's been, uh, he's been one of the highlights of the season. Seventh in the World Cup standings at the moment. He'll pick up a bag full of points today. I think he'll go ahead of Goranichev, his teammate. And he'll close down on Jakob Fak of uh, Slovenia. Jakob Fak actually ending up in sixth place, having started third. 19 hits out of 20. On most days, Mike, and most pursuits, Jakob Fak would certainly have met and he might even have won with that shooting performance. Take that, as you say, take that one penalty away from Fack. He lost a little bit of his legs, the pace in his legs on the last uh, 2.5 did Fack. And this is where the schedule is so important, isn't it? Do, do, do you think it might have been wiser to have a day's rest in between the sprint and the pursuit, just to let those who raced in the mixed relay recover? It's brutal. It is a, a brutal competition. But remember, the men's next race, well, three days they have now, and it's a 20 kilometre. I think you have to let them have decent recovery prior to that. <laughs> well, this was 12 and a half kilometres, about as quick <laughs> as they're ever going to ski 12 and a half. That extra 24 hours, you don't think it would have made it a little fairer? It would have, but remember, Television's all important. <laughs> the Saturday and Sunday races are vital for the spectators in here. And, and I think at times the athletes need, the coaches do defend them well, and the IBU listens to everything normally that the coaches say, but, well, there are priorities as well. So Norway claiming uh, yet another gold medal. Three out of four for them. Uh, Ukraine are the only other nation with uh, gold. The French have, uh, well, they've got three silvers now, all coming through uh, Martin Forcada, and uh, he'll be hoping that he can go one better in the races still to come. Shapulin gets Russia on the medal table. The Germans still aren't on. Maybe this afternoon a possibility, Mike, or do you think uh, there's real problems in the German team? Well, the, the, of course, Henkel, we know, shoots very, very well. But uh, they're quite a long way back. Gussner is the closest German, only, what, 33 seconds behind at the start of today. And that's where Schapulen started today, 33 behind. Further back in the women's race, Hildebrand is the next German at 55 behind. Poor old Fokad, he just got it wrong here. He's too worried about Svensson at that moment, and he's not looking at the line. Franz Berger standing there just watching what is happening. Do you, do you think the French will put a protest in saying that uh, Foucault's feet were over the line first? It, it, it was the three three polling actions before the finish that cost Foucault, and, and, and it may well have been instigated by the fact that he looked left rather than focusing on his balance and his concentration. Much harder to ski like that when you're looking at right angles to the direction you're traveling. I just think he was taken by surprise. He thought he's got the best line. He knew that Svensson was some 10 meters behind him earlier in that that attack and, and Foucault was taken by surprise. The classic error to to then begin to look and worry instead of focusing on the finish line. Yeah, and he tightened up as well in the shoulders, which means that the double polling action just is not as effective. Isn't Svensson uh, an animal? What a fantastic performance from him. Uh, he is. I remember when they, they brought him into the team when he was aged uh, 20. Remember they took him into the Olympic mass start race in Torino and he came sixth that day and I really thought Svensson was something special at that moment and he showed a special biathlon since then. Well we had uh, 
56 points between the two top men in the World Cup standings prior to today. That drops to 50, so bit by bit, Emile Hickler-Svensson is eating away at Martin Foucault's lead, but he's running out of races. That's 16 races for the season completed. We have just 10 more to go, and uh, there's plenty of opportunity, but if Foucault can keep this sort of form going, it's going to be very difficult to topple him off and rob that uh, yellow jersey from his shoulders. It is, but I mean, Foucault has got to be feeling so bad about the the approach to the line about his three silvers it's brilliant three silvers are brilliant but Foucault knows he's better than that I bet Bjorn Dahlen's glad he wasn't involved in that sprint for the line <laughs> <laughs> I thought Svensson is a tough man to beat in that last 200 300 meters and, and he, he played it so fearlessly to let the others catch up so quickly in the last 2.5 kilometers and that's the confidence he had in his own ability <laughs> Foucault will be back though well, Svensson went from second to fifth in Rupolding, but he's got it right this time round. From uh, first, he stays in first position. That's five out of six races he's been in the top five of a pursuit this season, Mike. Uh, shows what quality he is. He won the race in Pukuka. That must have given him confidence. And, of course, the 2010 overall World Cup winner will maybe have the Crystal Globe in his sights now. And Landa Tinger, look at the bib 15 second from right. Landa Tinger did so well from 15th to 5th, only 20 seconds behind. Well, it's nice to say that we're going to stay with the medal ceremony here in uh, Nova Mesto. There are a few delays in Villingham. I think the uh, wind is uh, playing a part there, the ski jumping with David Goldstrom. So we get to see Svensson on the podium. First time he really made his mark, I think 2008 in Ostersund when he started beating Bjorn Dahlen for the first time. He showed there how competitive he is and he won many races in similar style to today. So he certainly would have been confident. Do you think he was playing that sprint game on the last lap? Just say, I'll take it easy. It's going to be a sprint and I want to be as fresh as possible. It's a, it was a brave thing to do, but I think you're right. He was playing the, I will save this for the final 500 meters, but he nearly got it wrong because he tripped up. Well, there's a disappointed face on Martin Foucault. He wanted that third successive win, which would have equaled the record of Oleana Bjorndalen in World Championship and Olympic pursuits. It's not to be. Two golds followed by a silver. It is some record. And surely, surely he will end up on top of the podium at some stage over the next seven days. Anton Shapulin. A sensible race from him. One miss on the third shoot. He did what all biathletes want to do, hit the last five targets. That gave him a boost mentally, and it gave him a boost physically as well. He did so well, and uh, take that one miss away, and of course, he could so easily have been at the top, but that is how difficult biathlon is. I think the rest of the field, Patrick, when you look at Svens and Foucault once again, first and second place, the rest of the biathlon male field must be thinking, how do we depose these? How do we get on the top of that podium? Is it possible? Yeah, but isn't it great that we have two men contending for that top prize, whereas in the past, there's just been one person on his own. I guess the, the, the most recent duel was Poiret versus Bjorndal, and those two, uh, you could never quite predict who was going to come out on top. And, that, and that's maybe where Svensson and Foucault, two huge egos of perfection in biathlon, are pushing their limits, therefore pushing the limits of biathlon. Milishko will certainly be a little bit disappointed not to have been in the top three. He was uh, he was out of fuel when it came to the last 500 metres, but uh, it was a fantastic performance from him. 20 hits out of 20, which uh, on so many occasions would have given them the gold medal, but not today. Well done to Dominic Landertinger, 50 15th from 5th, and uh, for, oh, finishing in 5th, having started in 15th, he too hitting the full 20. And in 6th place, Jakob Fack, who started 3rd today, wasn't a bad run from him, only one mistake, Mike. Uh, his shooting has certainly got a lot better. Oh, brilliant, brilliant by athlete Fack. And um, yesterday, well, 3rd, so the bronze medal yesterday. He was confident today. And just one shot really has cost him. Yeah, it's a shame he wasn't medal. involved in the sprint because I think uh, I think certainly the Slovenians thought he might have had the winning of uh, both Foucault and Svensson. That would have been an interesting one. Foucault is uh, thinking, why did I let that go? He's hurting. He is hurting, and he's not going to enjoy watching the replay. And it will be those last five seconds that get replayed ad nauseam tonight on the local television here. 
I'm going to enjoy the press conference because, yes, the painful questions will be asked there and it'll be interesting to see what Foucault says. Well, there's the World Cup total score. Uh, as we said, just 50 points between the top two. Malishko is some way back. Look at that, over 150 points separating second from third. Further down, Lanatinger and Ada, the two Austrians, 11 and 12. Eric Lesser of Germany there in 13th. Tim Burke, it's still respectable in 15th place in the overall World Cup standings. It's time we saw him or one of the other Americans on the podium. But they're running out of races. The mixed relay, the sprint, the pursuit have already gone. We have the individual, the mass czar, and of course the uh, men and the women's relays still to come here in Nova Misto. But today, the women's pursuit, 15.45 Central European time for that race. Will it be Pedrushna who manages to hold on to the lead? Will Tora Berger come through for Germany or will the Russians rejoice in their first medal and come back with more?